What's up, guys? I'm here in Houston, Texas with the Reaper, Bobby Knuckles, Robin Whitaker. I heard you say that. I heard you say Bobby Knuckles one time. Yeah. I thought you didn't like that name. Nah, it's one of those things that, like, if I said, I'd, I don't know, it's just stuck. It's it just grew stuck. on you. It's cool. <laughs> it's it's like one, it's like you, it's like you're a member of like the Wu Tang Clan or something, right? Everybody <laughs> have like cool nicknames. Yeah. Now it's stuck, and I'm definitely I'm fond of it now. It's a good name. Yeah. We're back here now. It's taken a couple years, but a rematch. Now, speaking from experience, the bad blood fight. I remember the emotion I carried into the fights with Jones. It seemed like you had that in fight number one yeah. with Adesanya. Yeah. How much emotion did you, in 61,000, in that, how much emotion did you carry into the octagon that night? You know, honestly, I think, I think there was a lot of things going on like I was stressed out by a lot of different things mm -hmm. I've mentioned it before like I was burning out and a whole host of other stuff yeah I remember like, that I was I think all of the external factors I just kind of directed towards him yeah and took it out on him which then clouded my mind with anger and hate and all I wanted to do was rip his head off like yes yeah. and you can see that in the fight it seemed, in the fight. It seemed odd but I've been operating on this theory right everywhere I go that the Gaslam fight almost influenced a little bit the way that you approached it because you saw you're tough. I know how tough you are. I saw you get through Romero. I saw you get through all those times. And it seemed like, hey, I'm tougher than anyone. I can get through this. It was like such a forward pressure fight. I don't think I've ever seen you fight like that before in your life. Did you take anything from seeing Kelvin have the success that he had and it made you take more risk? Uh, I don't know. It, I'd have to remember back to the camp. But, uh, you know, the, in the camp we were working on a lot of, like, get in fast, get in hard yeah. and stick. Because he's a rangy guy. How mm -hmm. do you beat a rangy guy? You get inside. And, um, but I think the fact my emotions were kind of playing havoc yeah. with me, it influenced that to a reckless degree. Yeah. And uh, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's the worst, right? Like, I mean, like I said, I, I've been through it. And then you go into fight two, mm. right? You care, you're in better shape. You get in better shape. You think about the mistakes that you made and how do you apply them to the new fight. In the mind of Robert Whitaker and the team that you have, what did you guys do different? What did you guys do to maintain your mental, even though you have all the physical? Because I've seen over the course of this run you're on now, a different guy that's been very willing to fight wherever the fight is going. You don't really force anything anymore. Yeah, well, and that's exactly it. I've so after after the loss, I changed a ton of things. I changed mm -hmm. a lot of things um, mentally more than anything, but I also also physically with how I want to fight, what I want to achieve with the fight, and understanding my drives and goals and everything like that. I it gave me clear direction on where I want to proceed, and one of those things is just trying to get closer to a perfect mixed martial artist, which mm -hmm. I think is someone who uses all all weapons, all tools given to his given to him. And I've tried to incorporate like the loss gave me the freedom to try and expand and be better. As the champ, it's hard. Yeah. As the champ it's kinda of hard to really open up the, the the open everything up because losing you lose that yeah. thing that matters so and much. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like I I had no trouble beating everybody else with the mm -hmm. same skill set. There was yeah. no need to change it. But yeah, that that loss gave me the opportunity to be better. And what all the you said that you were burnt out because you were active as the champ, you were fighting. But then you see the new guy was kind of just shooting through the through the yeah. rankings, right? And everybody's talking about this new guy when you're the long running champion. Yeah. That had to play a part too, right? Because Definitely. I was the guy, right? Like when I was chasing down Jones, there were, Jones took that personal. And it made it very difficult for me to get him. Like, it, did, did you, did that bother you a little bit? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, it upset me that this, that this guy was like, you know, everyone was talking about him and under, underselling me and, and, yeah. and just, I don't know. It, it, was, it was a weird dynamic. It did make it personal because it was personal. Yeah. Um, but, I don't know, that was then. So do you <laughs> think two years now, you've grown not only as a mixed martial artist, but, like, as a man, your family oh. is... It's, you got to have another baby, right, in that time? Yeah. You got another baby. I mean, you got... I got, a, I got a 17-month-old daughter, too, myself, so I don't know <laughs> what I was thinking. I'm 43 almost. Yeah. But 
Is your life more in a place now where you can just go, you know what, man, I go out there, I compete free because the Cannoneer fight, bro, you look beautiful. I mean, I thought that was a fantastic fight, especially against a big, powerful guy like Jared who presents so many different problems. The Till fight, right after that loss, I saw you piece together a game plan over five rounds, look better. But then in the Gaslam fight, you look better than you've ever looked. Yeah. It's like, it seems like everything is coming full circle and the rematch is happening exactly when it needs to happen. Yeah, and I, I believe that as well because I was never fixated on the title of getting it back, do this. Mm -hmm. I was just taking one fight at a time and enjoying the process, enjoying the ride. My, my, my whole thing with I'm a completely different man now than I was then. No, I'm just, I'm different. I'm happy. I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm in there enjoying the fights. I'm enjoying fighting. I'm enjoying talking to people. And, you know, it's just made the biggest difference in how I fight, my approach to fighting. And because of that, like, I'm, I'm just happy Rob's a dangerous Rob. I'm getting in there just doing my thing now. Yeah. You know, people build gyms. I just, I built a wrestling academy myself very recently. But people don't build gyms like yours. <laughs> I mean, what in the hell is going on? Where, how'd you, I mean... It's massive. Yeah, yeah. Or is this a facility that you're just training out of, or is this something you're running as a business? Running as a business and training out of. It's a, the new Gracie Smith Grange is phenomenal, phenomenal. You can see the size of it, and it's, it's a massive. privilege to train in there. It makes, like, when you go to the gym, and if it's that big and it feels that good, and there's all state-of-the-art sort of, like, high-end finishes on the bathroom stuff, you feel better training. Like, <laughs> you feel better, and that makes the camps a little easier. I mean, you walk in there and it's your place, right? Like, what is that? Because ultimately, at times, the, the picture becomes more clear and what's important becomes more clear, right? The family, winning is obviously as important. But to, to have a business like that, everything seems in place. When you walk into that gym every single day, are you just amazed at how far you've come, Robert Whitaker, in terms of just your life and everything? Yeah, definitely. I, I'm, I'm proud of the, the mileage I've made, you know, on the, the way I've set my kids up. I'm, I'm proud that I have fallback plans, that I have things to focus on once I retire, that I'm, you know, I'm working on these avenues. And honestly, I'm just proud that I'm setting the platform for my kids. Yeah, that's what it's all about. That's what it is all about. And you're gaming now? Uh, mm -hmm. You play video games? Are you gaming online? Yeah, too much. What game? <laughs> right now, I'm jumping back into Skyrim. I'm not a little bit. What, well, I mean, people say games, and I don't, what about basketball? What about football? We've spoken about, about this. I'm just saying, like, what about soccer? And like, what, <laughs> what happened to sports games that you guys? We, we've spoken about this too many times. It's yeah, too real. Saying, like, like what, what are you trying to do? Like, I want to go fight goblins and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you want to escape reality? Yeah, I don't want to go fight, play UFC 4 or whatever it is. Like, I do that. <laughs> I don't know how you play that. Like, like, sometimes, like, I feel like I'm training the game. Like, I should be actually training, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how people... I don't know how you, you play those sports games. Like, it's just... Because stressful. they're fun and they're the best. <laughs> you don't want... So, so, so you never want it to be in the NFL? Hey, NFL, no. Uh, of course you did. Everybody wants to be in the NFL. Who doesn't want to dunk like Michael Jordan? Have you ever wanted to dunk like Michael Jordan? That'd be cool. You I'm can fine. on the video game. <laughs> right? You just make your guy with a 99 rating. It's better than everybody else. Yeah. The, the, only, the, only, the only good part about playing those sports games is when you get it over your mate and you can start trash talking the hell out of him. The whole time. And you just dance around the room like this. <laughs> and you're all happy and stuff. Like, that's the only reason to play those games. It's all I do. <laughs> it's where I make my living now. When you get it, toxic it, and you start smashing people. It, like. It's where I get my competition off right now because yeah. I can't fight you. I can't deal with you dudes anymore. <laughs> Rob, man, you seem like you're in a really good place, bro. You know, I've, I've known you for a long time, been around you uh, as the champion. You seem more free than having a long time, so... Good luck, my friend. It seems like you're ready to go. Brother, I am, I am as ready as I'll ever be. I'm enjoying it all. And uh, honestly, I just want to get to, uh, no, I want to cut weight, eat some food. Some how, food. how big are you? Because yeah. you look like more muscular. No, I'm, my weight's probably lighter than it's ever been. Really? Yeah, the process, mate. You're carrying a lot of like muscle. <laughs> yeah, I'm all, I'm all aesthetics now. And you're getting back into fighting in front of people, right? This will be the yeah, first time this run you've been on has been... It's good to give, give it back to the fans a bit, you know. I think it's it's good because I, I like mentally. I, I think of us as gladiators, right? And that's what we do. We're a blood sport for the entertainment of others. Yeah, and that's that's what we do. But I'm looking forward to making weight, getting some good food in me, earning my paycheck, and going home. Going back to Australia. Going straight home. My man.
Good luck this weekend. Thanks, my brother. Dog, good luck. I can't wait. It's going to be fun, man. It it's is. going to be fun. It is. We always do these lists, and uh, we're doing top five middleweights of all time. Got my boy Robert Whitaker on that list, absolutely, because <laughs> that title run you had was uh, fantastic, and maybe another one starts this weekend. Hey, let's hope so. Robert Whitaker, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, and tune in to UFC 271 this weekend. Hit the buy button. This is the main event. This guy's in the main event. How can you not buy a fight with that face? Look at that smile. <laughs>